In this video, we'll take a look at selecting and working with DOM nodes. We'll look at using Find Node, Select by Tag Name, Select by Path, and working with the Node List class. There are a couple different ways to select a node in the Abstract User Interface. The first one is to use GetNode. Now, GetNode is a method of both the Form class and the Window class. So if you need to get the node reference to a window object or to a form object, you can use get node. Now if you need to find a node within a window or within a form, you can use the find node method. And find node simply finds a node by name in the window or in the form. You can also select by tag name and select by tag name method returns a list of nodes that have matched the tag name that you have supplied. So the select by tag name method returning a node list means that you'll be working with a node list object that is a reference to all of the nodes that matched that criteria. You could also use select by path. Now by pa the select by path method uses a subset of the XPath notation to allow you to do pattern matching to search and find a set of nodes that match a particular criteria. Now let's start with find node for pinpointing or finding a specific node in the tree. Here we're going to work with uh, the find node method from the window class. So we're letting an object myWin be the current window. Now we want that our DOM node to be, which is n, to be equal to myWin.find node, find a label node with the name customer ID. Then down here we can call n.setAttribute and set any attribute of the label that we have identified. Here we're just setting the color to red. Now find node method is available in both the UI window and the UI form classes. So if you already have a reference to a form object, if you're doing something else within your code and you have that reference to the form object, you could also just call find node straight from the form itself. Now select by tag name is from the DOM node class. And in this example, we are going to, if we look at this line here, we're going to let dlist, and dlist is a new om dot node list object, we're going to let it equal dnode select by tag name form. So this is saying we want to create a list of form nodes from this object. And this object dnode is our root node. So the root node of our interface, we're searching for any nodes that are of uh, type form. Once we've found those, what we're doing here is simply using the node list methods, and we're going to do a simple for loop that allows us to search through the list. So dlist.getLength is the total number in the list. Then let dnode equal the list.item. So the first item in the list, we're going to get its uh, text attribute. Then we're going to set that text attribute to uppercase. So in essence, this is going through and setting all of the form text um, attributes to uppercase. Now, once we've exhausted the list, the for loop ends and our program continues. Last, we can use select by, t by path. And select by path allows us to use pattern matching, a specific type of syntax that is XPath notation. And as you can see here, our list now is going to equal dnode.selectByPath, and then we're going to search for all the windows with the name of GiftCert. And if you uh, want to learn more about XPath notation, you can see the full XPath expressions at w3schools.com. You can also see in our documentation the subset of XPath notation that we provide. So once we have found all of those windows, we're again going to go through the list and change the text attribute to order information. This slide gives you a basic understanding of the pattern matching 
options that you have with the XPath notation, which again you can use with Select by Path. If you're using the slash, it represents an absolute path to the element. The double slash, all elements in the document which fulfill the following criteria. The asterisk allows you to select all elements located by a preceding path. And here, this particular pattern allows you to supply the attribute and the value. So as we saw in the last example, finding a specific uh, node or set of nodes that have an attribute of a particular value. Now let's take a look at using the select by tag name and the node list methods to select a group of nodes and make a change to all of them. So let's add another action to our example here and this is going to be the change labels action. So what we want to have happen in this example is for when the user selects change labels that all of the label objects in the user interface are changed to a different color. So the first thing that we might want to do is get a handle on the root node so that we can search for labels from the root node of the user interface. And we could be searching from the window node, node uh, the Windows DOM node or the Forms DOM node but we're going to search from the root node and we can use get root node from UI interface uh, to do that. And up above I had set up uh, R to be a DOM node <clears throat> variable. So R is going to be our root node. Um, then we're going to want to search from R from the root and find all the label nodes. So we're going to need to set up a node list and if we look up top here we can see that we've added NL as a node list variable. So we're going to let NL equal the root node select by tag name. And we're going to select by tag name because what we're searching for are labels. Now that's going to return to us a node list object and now we're going to use the node list methods to um, process each of those labels in the list or each of those DOM nodes that are of type label in the list and then set their color attribute to purple. So we're going to say for i equals 1 to the node list's length, so I'm going to use get length to give the parameters of my list in my for loop here. Let n, that's just a, our node that we uh, set up, it's a DOM node, we're just going to reuse it here. Equal node list item and we're passing in the first item and i is an integer that we've defined up here as well. So let n equal the node list first item. Now we have a reference to that particular node. We're going to set its attribute of color to purple. and then we're going to end our for loop. Now when the list is exhausted, the for loop will end and we'll be um, out of that for loop. So let's compile this and let's execute. Now in a prior example we set up these options to add things to our user interface, so let's add a bunch of labels. Now when we choose change labels, we're going to expect that all the labels on the user interface turn purple. So here's a label, here's a label store name, and then all of our new labels as well. And as you can see when I clicked on change labels, a node list was created of all label type nodes, and we went through and set each of their color attribute to purple. Now by using the referencing from the root node, if I add any more of these labels and then choose change labels, 
those are also going to change to purple. So again, we're uh, searching from the root node down any node that is of type label, and we are going to set its attribute, each of its color attributes, to purple. So again, we simply use select by tag name, finding a particular tag by type label. Then we went through that list of nodes in the node list and set a particular attribute. 